Welcome once again to The Lost Signals Discusses Games and Gaming Culture, a pretentious, philosophical, pedantic podcast where we focus on various aspects of video games as well as other issues and topics within gaming in general. Hello there, welcome back to Lost Signals Discusses Games and Gaming Culture for Season 4 or 5, the only show we do quote-unquote Seasons 4, which I'm not even sure which one it is. Nevertheless, <laughs> Games is, games and Gaming Culture is back. I'm Scott Thurlow, and I'm here with Jonathan Ian Manzer. The next Jeff Bezos. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and Stephen Amosi. Hello. And so traditionally for the first episode, again, of the quote-unquote season of games, we usually do our top games. But for this year, I sort of changed it up a bit, A, to give everyone a little bit more time, maybe to finish off a game or two or um, find a quick one to play. So what we're going to do is sort of what I'm calling the industry madness wrap up sort of covering some of the big stuff that happened uh, in the industry and regarding some big developers and games that came out uh, throughout last year and even into the early months of uh, this year. So without further ado, I guess I'll start with like, I don't even know if this is the big one because like four or five things that I want to have in my notes Mm -hmm. that I want to like go over about it. So let's start with one that actually we did uh, a crossover episode with with, uh, our, our buddies, American slackers back when it was coming out, which is Fallout 76. So, I guess I'll go through a brief history, a brief little synopsis. 76 came out. I was iffy about it because it was an MMO and they promised a lot of stuff, blah, blah, blah. Fast forward a bit. It's released. It's Bethesda, game short. So it's buggy. It's glitchy, which would be more forgivable, perhaps acceptable word of single player game. But like all kinds of crazy shit happened. Like it was crashing. It was slow. Like people reported these weird bugs that just kept happening. And also on top of that, it was like badly reviewed. It basically... The, the consensus was something like it's just boring to play there's not there's no quest to it really like there's there's quests but not in the way you think of of a fallout game hmm. so like it was getting kind of trash you got like price drops like very early like a month after it's released or something like people just weren't enjoying it they said it was mediocre and definitely didn't live up to whatever everything they promised when they unveiled it at a3 then on top of that like it just got it snowballed it got worse and worse for bethesda like <laughs> All this crazy shit happened. For example, they had, uh, people have now dubbed it Duffelgate. So what happened was if you ordered the uh, Ultimate Edition, whatever, Power Armor Edition version, for like 200 bucks, you're supposed to get all this stuff, one of which being like a very nice, in the image, promotional image for it, very nice like canvas duffel bag. Then people were posting on Reddit and Twitter like, it's like shitty, like nylon, like it looks terrible. And it came out, some people got the real duffel bags, i.e. influencers, like YouTubers and stuff who had big audiences. So, like, all that, that happened. Then they were, like, going to do refunds, and they weren't. Then they were. So then when they finally did, people had to um, give them your ticket and your receipt. And then, like, that they leaked customer info, like, inadvertently. Like, they were just, like, we went to go, like, put your put your own one in. And you could see, like, everyone else's, like, personal information and shit. So it was a bad look for Bethesda all around. So you guys must have heard some of that, if not all. Yeah. So... It's Bethesda's like getting pretty trash. Like they're one, they were a pretty beloved developer, but because of all this stuff, people are like mm, looking a little shady right now. So I know that Ian, you're the only one of us that have played this game. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, despite all the horrible, horrible like security flaws that Bethesda had, and this you know, and Duffelgate and all that <laughs> bullshit that they happy did shit. surrounding the game. You know, like, in terms of reviewers, I heard that this game sucked, but in terms of people that I've talked to who played it, most of them thought it was decent. Yeah, I know, it's a little weird. So and, what were your actual impressions? And I want, yeah, I wanted to ask you what you thought of it. Well, before I go into that, I just have a comment to make. Okay. I want there one day to be a scandal involving a gate. It's going to be a gate gate. But I want it to be a false scandal that was orchestrated and they got caught. So then it's gate, gate, gate. <laughs> gate cubed. <laughs> but on to a Fallout 76. <laughs> so I got this out of curiosity because I have a tendency to believe that, uh, especially on reviewers on YouTube, I'm not quite sure how many people actually played this game who reviewed it uh, as negative. I think that there's a the bandwagon effect of... Uh, I think there certainly on was that. On one hand, it's... You said that Bethesda was beloved, and this is a chance to take down something beloved and people like doing that 
and also the fact that it's, oh, this person says it's bad, so I'm going to say, regardless, it's not bad. In fact, I kind of like the desolation of it because it actually feels very much like what a post-apocalypse, uh, post-apocalypse is. I pretend Fallout 4 doesn't exist. So Fallout New Vegas was um, really the, civil, the reemergence of civilization. Mm. Uh, Fallout 3 was less so than that. Uh, it was e- even more like just the, the fires. Of civilization. Yeah. This, you're like the first people out of the... Right, uh, that's the framework thing. for it, right? And yeah, you, you're not meeting many other people, but you're by yourself. It's it, it's weird because I'm suspicious of other people, if you haven't noticed by my... Mm-hmm. Like, I hear gunfire in the distance. Like, uh, it's another player, but I don't know if they're good or bad. It's so I'm kind of like, yeah, hunched in a house trying to wait until they disappear from my site <laughs> while I'm working with some robots to clear out like a factory or something like that. I don't know. It just felt very much like uh, just being in the wilderness by yourself, surrounded by monsters. And to me, there's an appeal to that. Yeah, I can see how some people find it boring, mm. but I didn't. I, I found it... Uh, the weird part is that it, it's very green, uh, yeah, it doesn't have the browns and the dead trees. Palette, you mean, yeah. It's more of a Chernobyl type situation where mm-hmm. like the radiation actually saw nature flourish, and yeah, so I I don't know I would it's it's not better than I, I say it's better than Fallout Four. It's very strange. Like one of the one of my few um, I I really like Fallout Three and um, New Vegas and probably. Four better than you, Ian, although that was clearly and easily the worst of those mm. three games. I would agree. I, Preston Garvey, man. Yeah. <laughs> Mark it on my Fucking motherfucking Preston nap. Garvey. Jesus Good. Christ. I got so sick of him. Anyway, um, one of my few complaints with especially three and Vegas was that for such a, like, for a world that's supposed to be desolate, it felt so full. Mm-hmm. And, like, I would be interested in playing a Fallout game that felt really a lot more desolate and like you were more on your own. I think that would be a cool thing to well, have and it makes sense and it makes sense in this setting sure. for that to be the case because it's much closer to the apocalypse the like what as far as I know like the the uh super mutants and the um and the ghouls aren't like fully baked yet at this point no, but like they're, they're still like, there kind they're... of in in their like development Not phase. The super mutants make no sense. But the ghouls do. Yeah. They're there for the sake of it almost, at least one of them. Now, here's a interesting thing. that I hated the town aspect of 4. What they do mm. in 76 is you have a camp that you can... Uh, so, you have a, a, a square of somewhat decent size, which you can like build things in and like mm. put chairs and maybe like build a house type thing. And then uh, it, it's portable. Yeah. So, you set up where... So, you do have that crafting situation, but it's... One. One. That yeah, that would have been so much better. Yeah, it's, it's, so it, it works a lot better even though I found it really grating in 4. That was a big thing in 4 is like, it felt like I I had a home in 4. I had whatever the main town is that you first get to. It was the one that Sanctuary, I used I think. as, yeah, I think, as the one that I used as home. But it felt like they just wanted you to make a hundred homes. Mm-hmm. And I was like, no, you should be tr- like focused on sure. building one place up and like not worry about these, all these other fucking towns and shit. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. Fallout Sim City. Uh, <laughs> that's what it felt like. You're just populating yeah. and you're running tasks for these, uh, uh, <laughs> these annoying, again, yeah, there's no one, there's no one, there's no Preston Garvey yelling at you, but there's no one telling you anything in this. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, like you're right. Like, so you're saying like it's almost like hyperbole. We're like, oh, this fucking sucks. Like, but I mean, I saw like I, I of course keep up on this probably more than you guys, and just in general, like mm. watch like a lot of video reviews of it. Like just when it came out, and as all the controversies kept building up, but like, the consensus was like, yeah, maybe like the things. I guess I want to tell you like that's cool that you got like the feeling of it being desolate, like the way it was. But I don't think that's what they intended. Like they wanted to have a big MMO. But instead, like no, they they limit the amount of people within the a, server. A, a server. Sure. So I think there's like 20 people on the entire map. So it's, I think you all have to get together in a sense for like the big showdowns. But in general, it's supposed to be you're on one part of the map. The other, you have no idea where the other people are. And I I, be, I believe at a certain level it becomes PvP. So you don't know if the person's coming after you or yeah, not sure. uh, to help you. But uh, which has the, it adds an element of 
I see another person, I'm that's actually scared yeah. of interacting with them. And that seems more close. so than I am in real life, and that's very hard to get. <laughs> and it seems like your your experience with it was like decent enough. But all I'm saying, like, is my point is like the general like, consensus, even amongst like the reviews and so forth that I actually trust and would say like did play the game. It was like their int- like you got out of it like. But that was, like, wasn't their intention. Like, for example, one of the big end game things is to find uh, the nuke codes and do that, mm-hmm. right? So, like, it instantly, like, of course, within a very short amount of time, a small dedicated group of players found them and posted the code. So, like, and they didn't, like, change. So, they didn't randomize it or anything. Yeah. And, like, again, one of the, fun, like, I think it was New Year's Day. Like, when the, when the year turned over, the codes didn't work anyways. <laughs> like, and then there's another instance where everybody. Why'd you man? Yeah. Everybody yeah. in the server. People made that joke for sure about that. <laughs> And then everyone on the server launched a nuke, which crashed the servers. Like, again, there was a lot of connectivity issues and shit. Yeah. And, like, there's there's a lot of bugs. And one I remember that I saw for sure, like, replicated was uh, you would attack an enemy or a player even, and they would take, like, a small server of damage and then heal up. So, like, you were nothing was affecting <laughs> them at all. And they kept, like, patching shit and then patching one thing and then breaking something else right. and then trying to patch that out, and that broke some other shit. So, remember... You- New Vegas was unplayable for like a year <laughs> uh, when it first came out. I was out. able to play through New Vegas, but like all I'm saying is like, I guess New Vegas broke for me for sure. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know if I like subscribe to this hundred percent, but like one of the points that was raised was that yeah, that was back when they were like more known for that. There wasn't as many open world games, and again, it wasn't an online MMO. Mm-hmm. So like now that we've advanced to that point, and they've tried to like toss their hat into the ring, it was a broken and glitchy one. Which yeah, everyone's like, oh, but that's of course they were broken and glitchy. I only had one glitch happen to me where I got stuck somewhere, mm. but I was able to get out of it with enough effort of jumping, like and fucking around, left. I, it, I felt I, I played it off as I got my foots caught in like a tree <laughs> branch and like yeah, trying okay. to. Get, but good RP, good RP. It, it, I didn't find it all that glitchy. Right, so like that's fine. I'm I, all, like, but it was one of the big hot button issues, like when it came out and continuing into this year. The problem with it is and it's the nature of the genre itself is that the impermanence of uh what you do there mm, so there's yeah. this i had this thing where uh robots were running uh basically this town and attacking and if you went and did the quest uh, and killed the um whatever it's a certain the, amount the, of three them. three uh like uh controlling robots uh all of a sudden all the robots become friendly right. and you can explore the thing really cool Except that after a certain amount of time, it, just it resets. resets the quest. Yeah. yeah. And so, so it's kind of bull. Sure, that's, I mean, right. that's, that's, that's the nature of MMOs but for sure. Scott, I want to I want to ask you before we move on because sure. I feel like we're getting towards the end of this one. Um, so I knew about all those other things that you mentioned. What is the? Do you know a little bit more about banning? Because you have yes, you have this handy sheet for us. <laughs> yeah. Do you know a little bit more about the banning players who found a dev room yes. and the nine hundred hours player? So again, I want to like, hear about this. That was later on. Like all the shit, like everyone dumped on it. So like people, like, whoever was still fucking around with it. So what happened was <laughs> they found and or was it were able to like accidentally glitch into like basically a dev room that had all the items in the game. So now this goes to the nature of MOs. That mm-hmm. means people are like sometimes legitly, if you will, like they got into the room. And like took out like all the high level guns and like legendary mm-hmm. shit, blah blah blah, and like all this ammo, like everything you can imagine. And then people are then replicating it as well, like in order like to sell on the gray market kind of thing. Yeah. So like either legit or somewhere in, or not legit, uh, com- completely breaking the terms of service, somewhere in between. But then Bethesda banned the people. They're like, hey man, one person, a couple of people, like more than a couple like, actually. Whose fault again, is this? On the thread, they're like, I accidentally glitched into the fucking room. I wasn't even trying to do it. Yeah. Some people were, to be fair, like they. They t- but again, who gives a it. shit if if Bethesda allows them to do that? But that's what I'm saying. But like, <laughs> that's like, on them. Sorry, you're in the glitch room. You got banned. And like, well, that's unfair. They're like, mm. so then yeah. the other one was the 900 hours thing. Was got somebody allegedly played for 900 hours and were logged in 900 hours or so in in 76. Because of that, of he had like whatever it was, some ridiculous amount of ammo, and like it was flagged as if he was duplicating. But like, <laughs> if you play that much, like, of course you're gonna have a shitload of motherfucking ammo yeah. for whatever it was. So like it's still like because he can't get to his account, he like um argues against what the actual numbers were that they claim. Like it's it hasn't been resolved as far as I know to this date. This was a more probably one of the most recent ones. Yeah. But like they're like banned, and he's like, well, people are like, what? Well, you just banned like you're probably your most loyal player. Yeah, like exactly. Great, good PR there. So again, there's some discrepancies about whether it was legit, whether he was duping, or whether he just happened to amass. He had, as I recall, he had a main and like an alt character. 
that he would swap ammo and guns and shit between just to fuck around with and try different things. Mm. And eventually he amassed enough items in game that, of course, that's going to destabilize the server a bit because it has to keep track of it all. And it's like so much of it. But like, like that was the thing. And they, they, he can't get into his account to prove them wrong. Or like at least to, again, That's what you get him. for hoarding guns. <laughs> I guess, but like that's what you do. At least that's what he was doing. If you it's play this what, shit for 900 what the hours. the Civilians did in Waco, <laughs> Texas. I suppose. Yes. So it's yeah, never it's... a good look in real life or in 76, it seems. That's true. But yeah, it was one of the, like the, one of the major ones, like again, late of last year, like November when it came out and just controversy after controversy after like this game took a pounding and so did the devs themselves and it was one of the big things and some of it's still ongoing. Yeah. So yeah, so, you're right. So let's move on to a bit to another uh, big developer who m- I think it's more acceptable to hate on, and people do I think rightly for a reason. <laughs> and here's why: it's Activision Blizzard, which I have uh, dubbed asshole bastards. Um, on top of all the sort of slimy shit that they've been known for with their microtransactions, like one of the stupid ones that came out that was famous is um, they wanted you to pay a dollar for a fucking like reticule like dot site, like a standard dot site you would see in any other FPS, but it was one of their but the big asshole thing was they put up, uh, his name is Bobby Kotick, but I've dubbed him Bobby Cocktick. <laughs> He's their CEO. And in a shareholders meeting that was like released, like the DSLs of which were released later, they put up, Activision Blizzard put up record profits this year from all the shit that they released, like COD and like whatever else they released, a couple mm. other shit. And even with, be, aside from that, he still laid off. They laid off like 800 employees or something like that, like a large percentage of their team. While he himself continued to make a huge salary and I have a capitalism a note, yeah, a, a, of course capitalism. A, note, a note related that he's listed as one of the most overpaid CEOs in America not just in video games just in general wow. of any companies so yeah so he was a dick bag about that it's his vision no it's that's not that's really I guarantee you Bobby Cock does not play video games at all <laughs> he just says how much money can we uh, you know, extract out of a mon- as many people and even that's not fucking enough you're right it's capitalism gone rampant really yeah. but that was a big thing because it screwed over the devs and this might be, uh, sorry, real quick, but you guys can comment in a second, or maybe it might be its own episode, but there is no union within the game dev like industry. Right. So like they had no recourse they came along to do too anything. Late. There's no unions anywhere, <laughs> yeah. except well, for the teachers, no? Yeah. But uh-huh. on top of that, sorry, so related to that, they AB had a deal with uh, Bungie for Destiny, like a couple months ago, maybe two or three months ago at this point. Right when the new year was turning over, mm. they decided whatever, like however it was phrased in the legality of the clause of the deal they made, Bungie was able to take it. Like they're like, we're splitting away. We're we're no longer going to work with you, and we're taking fucking Destiny IP with us. And like even Activision was like, okay, you can do that because uh, we're not satisfied with your numbers. Even though Destiny Two was pretty fucking solid numbers. Yeah, I feel like so, Destiny is crushing for them. So like yeah, like it it was people thought many of the pundits, me included, I, I thought was like. That was kind of a positive split. I'm glad Bungie got away, like un- out of their under their thumb, yeah. but it was a, a big split. Even even though again they were posting up like whatever profits, billions of dollars in profit, and you know hundreds of millions of units sold combined through their shit. But they still like nope, it's not enough, it's not enough, and you're all fired, and I still get to keep my spot and salary as CEO and like the the big wigs and the shareholders. I actually saw a uh, a video online. If you're, I think from What Culture. Mm. But they're talking yeah, about. Yeah, they're actually pretty so. Uh, they're talking about how a n- number of publishers have these ridiculously high expectations yep. for units sold, exactly. which mm-hmm. aren't realistic to how the market actually works. One hundred percent correct. I would agree with that, and that's one of the big problems. Like, well, they're they're out of touch. They don't know what to, they what they expect is never like reasonably going to be returned. That's the thing is I I'm not sure they're out of touch. I think that they make those demands so that they can you know, throw their weight around whenever they want to. And, like, that's yes, the thing. They're like, all right, well, you sold the second most units in the world last year, but you didn't hit the demand that we made, so fuck you. Like, we can leverage that against you in the next time that we're I guess, holding but it's great, talks or whatever. But I am a little – I am. I wanted to say I am a little disappointed that Blizzard is part of this because they made some of my, like – Lo- beloved games from my youth, and it really sucks to see that yeah, they, they are part with these, Activision, who is a, like aside shitty from, fucking yeah, aside from EA, they're like the slime balls of the universe yeah. of the industry. Steve, can I ask you a question? You can ask me anything, Ian. I can't. What would you rather deal with, micro transactions or microaggressions? <laughs> <laughs> I'd prefer not to deal with either. I want to pay not to have microaggressions. But uh, to be honest, if it was like you do away with one, 
I would just do away with microaggressions because I can choose not to pay microtransactions. <laughs> That's a funny question. <laughs> Good random uh, thing there. But yeah, like so that was a big thing because again the bungee split and like the the blowback of them being like, Hey yeah, we posted record sales, but it wasn't all the money in the fuck literally in the world, so we're not satisfied with the, these numbers, which yeah. are literally like record posting numbers. So get out of here. Yeah. Hey, so that was an asshole thing on them. And then somewhat under that, of course, like EA is always going to be in the in- mm-hmm. news industry of being mm-hmm. a scumbag. So like it's funny because it, they they don't look <laughs> it wasn't as bad as like the Star Wars Battlefront thing. But they got into a tiff, and not even not only them, like uh, t- 2K, Take Two, some other like equally ish slimy ones, got into the the tussle with the governments, like in Belgium and Europe, <laughs> about the loot boxes thing, because they, they're going to be regulated now. They they either had to remove them from their games or were told to, right? Yeah. And they're like, nah, we're not going to fucking do that. And they're like, well, we're going to fucking sue your ass because now you're in violation. Because yeah, it is gambling. Yeah, and yeah. I think that the that's what it was. The, the courts have a really good argument that. But that's yeah. That's I mean, what it is. they classified so, it as such, and I would agree. And, of course, and it you're is. also taking uh, people underage. Yeah, and that's a big exposing thing them yeah. to uh, gambling. So this was a big part of your. I mean, this was your entire Mapaka talk this year, uh, right? Or last year at last November, yeah. Uh, the Mid Atlantic Pop and American Culture Association uh, yes, conference, which I academically and, railed against. Loop yeah, boxes, and yes. you can go and listen to Scott's talk uh, if you so on wish our, on our website. But um, good plug. I think that this is a fascinating thing to discuss. Uh, and and when we were talking about that, they were kind of in the midst of Belgium, right, was, mo- mostly Belgium, it being was like, a, go fuck. It was yourself. early on, <laughs> right? They, they had, that didn't uh, even happen. EA being like, "fuck you" to them, ha- that hadn't happened to happen when I made that talk. So, what's the latest on in the, in terms of that? I know it's probably a slow well, moving thing, but they were forced to back down. Like, like I believe they removed them like eventually. Like, yeah, but like the two uh, K, not EA, even two K was like, "hey." They tried to like <laughs> this is ridiculous. They tried to <laughs> solicit like their fans, like people by their games, so, like. To, to lobby the government on their behalf to be to be like no we the want loot boxes and we, yeah they they tried to like make that a campaign of theirs and it, most people were like I'm sure some people did it but of course they're like nah that's a bad look and we're not gonna do that but like I just thought no. it was funny <clears throat> and also like <laughs> ridiculous that at the same time that EA was like basically defying a government um regulation rule yeah in Europe well there are no nations just corporations yeah, you're right there are no <laughs> there is no Belgium there's only EA and Activision Blizzard and so forth. But yeah, that was a big thing that happened. In the brave new world, everything yeah. is a reference. So like that's still like that's still somewhat ongoing for sure. But I believe at this point they have at least been complying with removing them from the a- areas in which they were labeled as gambling, and you cannot have them anymore. Yeah. Uh oh. So uh, this is part of what we were discussing before the podcast. Okay. But uh, you have listed on here the PS4 hard crashes. Yeah. Because Some of this. Coming <laughs> yeah. So that was recent. So as this is like March sec- or 7th as when we're recording this. Anthem released uh, earlier in the month. Like actually released like four times if you really want to know because they had put out all these fucking stupid versions like oh sign up for this and that and you get it you get it earlier and then you get it earlier. Mm-hmm. So Anthem is sort of like the next iteration I will say like uh, a la 76 where at least in a broken state Again, reviews were bad. It's tried to do two different things. Uh, as Bioware made it, but they're under EA, right. of course, right? So, like, it was, again, plagued with glitches. People like, this, this and that doesn't work. Also, it's a boring game. Like, the end game sucks, etc. The loot is stupid. Doesn't make any sense. Like, <laughs> there's a quick random example, but there's um, a buff on one gun that reduces recoil on your last shot. Like what? Like that? Wait, what? <laughs> right? Like it's like minus fifty, minus 50 percent recall on the final shot in the round ra- of the round of the gun. Like, wow, there's right. It, <laughs> as a totality, you don't need that by default, by definition. So not only that, but right, but recently in the past week, it's been discovered that on PS4 specifically, <laughs> Anthem will sometimes crash it, sometimes like stop working, and sometimes turn off your PS4, and sometimes brick your motherfucking PS4. Mm. But I hear from what I heard just recently, the uh, Xbox One is starting to happen on. Oh, really? See, like yeah. I, I didn't. It, it had been happening on it, but supposedly, yeah. according to this, uh, what, I, yeah. what I read, that's Super ridiculous. Great. And like, how again? How do you how do you make a piece right. of software that fucks up your hardware? That's like, what I'm saying. Like, at least seventy six didn't do that. Yeah, seventy six would crash on its own, but not like melt your goddamn console, right? As he was saying earlier. Oh my god. So like, it's again, it's a bad look, and this, the shitty thing is like. 
while Bioware is not really the same Bioware who made like your, the things that everyone remembers them for, mm-hmm. because EA basically like it's like their B or C team even, but they're t- still technically called that, and they're again under EA's banner. People are like, well, because of this, EA just might do their EA thing and shuttle them. No, it, it's it's. I predict it's going to happen. Uh, going to go yeah. the way of uh, Dead Space. Yeah, uh, visceral games. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and it really sucks that they're like shitting all over the legacy of this like you know decent Again, fucking once, developer back once in the beloved day. studio. Yeah. Yeah. From yeah. and from what I understand, I don't unfortunately don't have my source in front of me. Is that uh, Bioware was feeling kind of pressured? Oh, yeah. to make this. They game. absolutely were. Uh, this was their f- in a sense swan song if, right. if, if like and they had to do it right to survive and they were pulling a lot of their resources mm. into making this game and it seems it didn't work out and probably underpaying developers yeah, no, so and like, yeah. QA you're absolutely right so I'll, stuff, just, I'll fill out some details Anthem was in development for six years like something like that they inv- unveiled it at E3 like a while ago mm. and again like what they showed off was not in the game, which isn't like necessarily specific to that mm. but on top of that it would, all those shooter looter fans was essentially what it is were like it's not that great they, they, the balancing is off, like I said. And, yeah, the bricking thing, like, just happened. So now it's bricking Xbox Ones, apparently. Like, I didn't even hear... I, I didn't, myself didn't see that. I just saw the PS4 shit. But that was earlier this week, like, yesterday, even. Like, hey, fucking giant companies that have games in development for six years, pay some QA. No, but no. So, like, no, pay but, QA. But to That's Ian, all you have to fucking to, do. To Ian's point, EA was like, get it done, like... We're, we're banking on this. Like, we want you to get out another games of service and their <sighs> MMO, microtransactional bullshit, but developed by Bioware. So, again, they had the cred and the goodwill coming into it. It releases in a broken state, like, almost not even a beta, alpha even. Yeah. And for full price, and as, like I said, containing microtransactions. And, again, not a good look. And you're right. It might be the death knell of Bioware because of that. And EA doesn't give a fuck. No, but I mean, it's, it's mostly their fault. I would say the EA is not going anywhere. Yeah, they they we almost certainly and Madden and yeah, whatever. I can like, say for certain that they Star pressured. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that they pressured um, Bioware into like do it now, get it, get it out, get rush it out, blah blah blah. Yeah, so like quickly, now you mentioned that um, a single player Uncharted like Star Wars game was in development, and then they they basically shut they canceled shut that, that down. shit. Yeah, yeah. so yeah, wow. EA remains EA, and as well as our. Um, other developers of their ilk. God, it's but yeah, like, God. it's a bad look for Anthem, and like that sucks because even though Bioware, like I said, Bioware as you know it today is not necessarily the Bioware you knew from previous games. It's still you know, a known and <clears throat> previous to this <laughs> studio that did good work, mm. and now they might be shut down. The thing is, what, what the worst part about it is, aside from melting uh, consoles. <laughs> From what I understand, it's a mediocre game. Yes, exactly. The, uh, uh, if it wasn't EA, they, uh, Bioware may have survived putting mm-hmm. out a mediocre game. And then if their follow-up was great, they would yeah. have gotten that goodwill back. Mm-hmm. Exactly. But I, if, EA, if, EA, if you don't make EA's n- predicted numbers... Um, yeah. they, Their unrealistic expectations, yeah. there's almost nothing ever will at this point. And yeah, so it's, it's kind of a vicious cycle and it fucking sucks. But they sort of did it to themselves, shot themselves in the foot in a sense. But they'll never care about that or admit it, yeah. for sure. And actually, I, was, I don't know where else to mention it, but uh, Respawn, which used to be uh, Infinity Ward, more or less, they made Apex Legends, which is the biggest Battle Royale game right now. Like, it's overtaken Fortnite, mm. like, by far. Or like, it got to 50 million players, like, in a quarter of the time that Fortnite did. Mm. So, like, but everyone is like, yeah, this game is amazingly well designed. It's one of the best, bat- if not the best Battle Royale right now. And they're technically under EA <laughs> as well. <laughs> or, like, have a uh, deal with them. I wanted to um, ask, and I, and I know that, um, well, this has been mostly negative things. There, I have a couple, it's going to be mostly that. I have a couple, <laughs> to, I have a couple of things, but like, I wanted to ask, uh, so the, in terms of the negative things, like Red Dead 2, um, and this is kind of off topic, but Red Dead 2, uh, the multiplayer came out, and they were getting a lot of shit for that. I yep. don't know if you've kept up with like what's going on with that. A like, bit. I haven't really, but... Like they got a lot of uh, guff for their uh, for their uh, money. economy, yes. yeah, their economy. And has they have they like fixed that, or is that still a problem? Well, I I don't know. To your, uh, I can't answer your question, but I will offer you um, uh, Grand Theft Auto Five. I believe it was. Yep. Its multiplayer was had a lot of. Uh, I don't know if they're. You had to buy to get in-game currency. You had to use it's your called own. shark points or yes. crap like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it was. It's known for uh, uh, Rockstar has a history of right. 
multiplayer, uh, taking money from the multiplayer. Shenanigans, for sure. Uh, so to answer, yes, I've kept up on it a bit because I was never that interested in playing Red Dead Online anyways. I did tried a bit of it and I thought it was okay. I didn't even play enough of it to say whether or not the economy sucked. But from what I gather, it's not good. Like they've made, again, it was mostly a beta for a while. And yeah, they made some changes here and there. But the consensus seems to be, from what I have kept up on Sivo, that it's still not that great. It's kind of not worth it. Yeah. And like the one thing is like that I will jump on the bandwagon a bit, if you will, is that uh, Red Dead was before that. Like the online mode was like ancillary. It was afterwards. So like the draw of Red Dead is it's huge open world single player game that's amazingly detailed and a lot of care and craft put into it. People are like, hey, why not make single more single player DLC, like more stories within that? Not again, they just want to Rockstar wanted to almost recreate GTA V's success in the mm-hmm. online sphere, but it again hasn't been a good look. Now have they been as panned as some of the other shit I said? No, not quite. But there have never there have not been glowing reviews about it right. either. So it's mostly there. At this point, they've been trying to like introduce new things or like, oh, we're adding a mode here, like soon. People are like, yeah, too little, too late. Mm-hmm. Essentially, like that's that might be can be said of a number of things we just mentioned. But to answer your question, it's that's where it lies, as far as I understand, at this point. Okay, it's good to know, or not good to know, but that's. <laughs> I mean, it's good <laughs> to know. It's yeah. not good that it ha- yeah. has happened, but. So yeah. I want to give a positive story okay. about a developer. We're going to talk about this uh, prob- probably for uh, a game of the year. Stop games, okay. Or, or is it this year's? I think it's actually, so it'll be a year from now. Uh, Capcom. Yep. You know what's funny? Oh, you I have it, like, th- I have my original notes here, folks, yeah. if anyone uh, listening. And then I have a little addendum that I made today. It just says, before you go on, it just yeah. says Capcom is killing it. <laughs> but they created Resident Evil 2. Yeah made what's perhaps the perfect uh re- not reboot uh remake re- remake of a game flash remake. it's pretty fucking incredible yeah. yeah and uh they seem to be doing everything right for their fan base but also to garner new fans as well for yeah. sure and so yep there are there are heroes there are and on top of that uh, i was going to mention uh, to add on to capcom they also just uh dmc5 just released two in fact pretty glowing reviews as well mm-hmm. So that's why Captain's Killing, yes. Of course, Resident Evil 2, and then follow that up with DMC5. And yeah. again, it's almost to be the same consensus where, like, hey, if you're a longtime fan, this game's awesome. And if you're not, it's still fucking awesome. Yeah, get, you can easily get, get into jump it. in. Yeah. So, yeah. I Good actually. Call on the positive. I feel like I, I Some developers are doing something positive. So, so this goes back to 2018 and possibly even in 2017. But. And I'm going to call it positive news, but I don't know if it's <laughs> okay. per se positive. It's it's something that none of us are really in tune to, which is why it's probably not on this list or, you know, even thought of. But probably the biggest games development uh, that came out of nowhere since Minecraft is uh, Fortnite and PUBG mm. uh, coming up and, like, being so wildly fucking popular. Sure. The fucking like, battle it, royale, it's man. Just, it, you know, it's, it's tough to have, like, a... a a discussion about games culture industry as we're as we're talking about it without talking about the at least mentioning those. Sure, that's what I said. Like I don't know much about them. I've never played any of them. I don't think any of us have. Oh, I have. I played oh, PUBG. You? Okay. Uh, before it's it's not my type of game, but it's fun and I can see the appeal of it. Uh, a lot of my students are actually into that. Uh, yeah, everybody Netflix, seems so. to fucking love yeah, it. I and it's say, like yeah. it's wild. It's 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 the darling genre of like right now, like at this moment. And like I said, Apex Legends is supposedly like yeah. the best one within that. That people are like, oh, before this it was Fortnite, and now it's that. And you're right. Like maybe we should uh, just give me an idea on air that perhaps we should cover that, even though I haven't played any Battle Royals myself mm-hmm. either. I just know following the industry that it, yeah, it's very, they're, hugely they're, popular. They're fun. It's. A, it's yeah. like playing any, uh, except it's more accessible to play. So yeah, you can literally on your phone play uh, those games. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, I also want to give a uh, shout out to Nintendo, which is continuing to be Nintendo. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> this is the last minute thing. Uh, Reggie, their, their CEO just retired, or their president just yeah. retired like recently. And he was pretty beloved. Like He sort of, if not turned them around, took them in a... T- to a new corner per se in, in in a positive way for the most mm-hmm. part that it seems to be the consensus and he was like he was like the anti bobby cocktick if you will like he was a cool ceo mm-hmm. to his fans and also to the employees uh. that like he didn't fuck them over he was fighting you know uh, always ha- you know, was behind them had their backs so like consulted him for uh retiring in in 
and the work that he did. And you're right, like they've been pretty fucking solid. There has been no huge controversies <laughs> regarding them involving them. And the Witcher, uh, uh, CD uh, Project Red, Project, yeah. yeah, like they're also seem to be generally pretty good. So they're, yeah, you know, we're trying to. There are some positive, are some positive stories. stories. Out there, That's true. Out there. Uh, so, but unfortunately, I will have to mention uh, what the, the uh, one other big thing that I wanted to cover <laughs> is again another beloved developer. I liked all their shit. Mm. Telltale, like out of Rip, nowhere, yeah. went bankrupt, like it collapsed. Came, I remember, I remember, see, like probably getting into work earlier than you that day <laughs> and seeing it on my news feeds and be like, "Yo, did you see this shit?" And you, of course, you had like just woken up and you were going into work. And you're like, "What the fuck? <laughs> what yeah, the fuck?" Everyone said yeah, that. Yeah. 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 I mean, they seem to be consistently producing mediocre to quality products. Solid enough stuff. Apparently, they were just really shitty with money and yeah. also with their employees. Yeah, so what I have really is here, sucks. it's internal mismanagement led to the abrupt closure of studio. So, like, I did a little research. I found, like, one or two articles um, that had interviews with former uh, mm. developers, like, individuals who worked there. And, like... From what, if I can paraphrase it real quick, it's something like, yeah, you know, like they present like a positive face. Oh, we're doing pretty good. Like we're going to be getting this and that um, IP because, you know, they had a lot of IPs. They had Walking Dead. Yeah. They had, sorry, excuse me. They had Wolf Among Us and Tales Game of Thrones and, and Batman. Batman and yeah. All this shit, right? And they had plans to do more Minecraft even, mm-hmm. right? So like, they, like oh yeah, we got we got work to come for years to go, like years down the line. But I think it's almost a two prong thing, and I don't want to like make so a, much coke. Make a <laughs> of it. It's all coke. You just spend all the money on coke. Of coke. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> maybe, maybe the uh, this the is all I deserve. Yeah, yeah. Maybe the higher ups <laughs> did that because yeah, they they hid the fact from their employees that they weren't making enough like uh, as much money as they thought. They in fact were starting to lose off some profits to bleed them mm-hmm. off, and so like it was a surprise, of course, to the employees and to the you know, the day to day devs, if you will, themselves. They had a huge company wide meeting, like last minute, like. People are like that's probably not good. Yeah, you're all fired. <laughs> yeah, and like, yep, we're out of money. But I, I was <laughs> so strange. I don't know though. how to. I have how I feel about this statement, but you guys can maybe tell me. One of the other problems was, yeah, they were they were, had a lot of IP deals that were like fairly well known and popular, and were working on others coming on the pipeline. But their game structure and their engine didn't change. Like they were doing the same shit. Must really. have been so cheap to make those games, right? right? And if you would think, right? They so, must have spent all their money on, on buying the, on the, the IPs. Yeah, yeah. On, the, on the contracts right. with it, sure. But, like, eventually, like, they're pumping out the same kind of game over and over, like, without innovating anything mm-hmm. at all. And eventually that is, wears kind of thin. Yeah. So, like, yeah, while I enjoyed a number of their things, like, you played, even you said this on some episode, maybe last season E, you play one Telltale game, you played them all. What's good about them is, like, the characterization yeah, and the writing. Like, I played the Batman. Uh, they gave it up for free. Uh, yeah. Somewhat recently, Yeah, actually. a while back. Yeah, I remember. And I, I enjoyed playing it. It's a <laughs> quick game. I know what I'm getting playing a Telltale game. Yeah. I'm there for the story. And sometimes they're, they really, I think the thing is how well they develop their, uh, their uh, narrative trees. Yeah, I agree. Uh, and if I feel like the choices I'm making have a difference and some games do that better than others but that was telltale and i was happy to purchase their sure. product i so like I'll, I'll say this i like them the least of the three of us you guys enjoyed them a lot i played a several of them as mm. well and i enjoyed them um especially at first but i really got to the point where as you mentioned scott they didn't innovate at all they didn't change yeah, the, the their, wear kind like, of thing. and I, I was like I wish they would do something different with these, and like I just kind of got bored of like playing the same Batman was different type of though. game overall. I, I mean, innovated in that. the graphics were slightly different, but there was no difference in like there wasn't much difference in the mechanics of the way that the game operated. I wouldn't say it was vastly different, but I would disagree that I think there were innovations such as the idea of doing the detective work and piecing together what happened mm. and the thing. Okay. Was different than they had a couple like, but... of different things, and yeah, I think if they oh, if they were still allowed to be a studio, I think they could have turned a corner and like d- started to integrate more things in the base stuff that they've always had in all, every single one of their games. You know what? Though this is fairly this the collapse Telltale is fairly recent. You know, within the past six, seven yeah, I think it was in September like or something. So like, I'm yeah. I'm actually for me, you guys might not feel the same way, but for me, I'm kind of glad that they went under because now. Other companies can make those types of games, and it doesn't have to be like, this is my shtick, this is what I'm doing. You can still get those types of games, but it's not going to be like the same type of game over and over and over again, because that's all they do. Or people say that, oh, Telltale failed, and they had a pretty good model. Uh, Why are we going to attempt to 
innovate uh, well, in this genre if we can pump out uh, something Battlefield else, yeah. 36. Sure. I mean, that's the way they were always in the field. Why, that's the same way Telltale felt. Why do, why well, do we innovate in our own genre? <laughs> I'll address know? both of those things, actually, because... So, I don't know if I'm glad that Telltale is gone. Like, that sucks for all the devs who worked there, like, who got completely fucked over out of the blue and for almost no reason. Well, like, I completely agree with that, but right, that's uh, their fucking so, owner's fault. <laughs> to be fair, like, so I did buy, uh, because I've bought almost all the, if not everything, I got the last season of The Walking Dead that mm-hmm. eventually they were, like, some other studio hired on most of the original team was working on it before they went under and were, they let them finish it. Like, they right. gave them the resources to finish it. So I bought the last season just sort of out of vague loyalty or at least... At least I'm going to finish it off. Now, there's a game called The Council, I believe it is, which did sort of take Telltale's framework, but then added on to it. For example, you actually actually have skill points, mm-hmm. and there are entire, are entire plot threads that are closed off or open up to you based on A choices and what your skills allow you to choose within that. So, like, it, there's some innovation being done. So it's not like they, you know, I don't think, I would say maybe some small indie-ish dev Somewhere might be like, it's it's doable, it's possible. We just can't fall into that same hole that they did. And that's kind of like that's kind of what I want of these types of games. I don't want a company that is gonna just re redo the same type of game over and over again. I want an indie dev to take it and like do something interesting or different with it. Like if if it if all it is is like I'm just gonna do the same Telltale game over and over and over again, then I that and and I'm not saying that like no one's gonna be interested in that. I know that. You guys like those games. I but like I liked them at first and then they got stale to me. Yeah, I get you. My fear though is with the consolidation of the video game world with companies like EA, mm. know, like Nintendo for instance. Yeah, they 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 innovate upon the same game every <laughs> single time. Uh they're not going to branch out to do something interesting. Like wishes like I I wish for a thousand things. But the reality is that, yeah, it's we might get any but... developer who will make a Telltale-like game. But there's a, there's a if a company dies, there might not actually be someone to take it to place. fill that spot. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, but it's I mean, a risk. keep giving your money to other types of games. Like there are a bunch of indie games out there that you can go buy easier than ever, right? Like nowadays, sure. you can just go on uh, PS Steam or whatever. Now, yeah. or, like for instance, you know, uh, like I, I love Xbox the Live resurgence of. Uh, uh, FMV games. Yeah. Uh, but again, like, so the thing is just, to, but just boldly saying that with Telltale dying, it's good for the market I that didn't... these type of games uh, will be produced by others isn't necessarily a true statement. I mean, good for the market is different uh, or good for depending the on who you ask. Uh, I, I don't, I'm not necessarily saying that it's good for the consumer. It's, I, I think that um, if it's going to say anything to... So, like, what's the lesson that you learn from EA if you're a game developer, or from right? Telltale, do you or, I'm sorry, from Telltale if you're a game do developer. Do not learn any lessons from EA ever. Uh, yeah. Learn what not to do. Correct. <laughs> Scott is correct. D- uh, depending on but, what developer like, you are. What is it? EA, is it like don't you, invest in that properties. Do you, lear- do you learn to uh, not make the same type of game? Do you learn to diversify because you can't make, like, succeed making the same type of game over and over again do you learn that um you need to fucking actually be good at uh running a company yeah, because I that's one of the things that you should is, definitely is learn more important. but like i you know the first one is definitely uh appreciate like sure. in terms of this i think like diversifying your game uh portfolio i think is a an important thing for a developer i guess i mean it's a tricky question you know? uh, which telltale thought Thought they were doing, and they were doing to an extent with like buying different uh, IPs. There's a look at uh, Madden and FIFA as a model. Why are we talking about EA again? We thought we just well, decided because we're talking about companies <laughs> who do the same that thing. produce the same thing, or Nintendo produce the same yeah. thing time after time. But EA also puts out eight other different types of games. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, they Madden comes out every every mm-hmm. fucking year, but it's not like EA only makes sports games. You know? No, I get what you're saying. So, like, it might be its own <laughs> fucking episode of conversation, but I would say something like, I still think there's, a f- like, if Telltale didn't collapse, I still think because of mismanagement, that's basically what happened, right? Mm-hmm. So, the lesson to be learned is manage your company as well. And yeah, that's ma- the important Be one. transparent <laughs> to your employees about wh- what your fucking profit margins are or not. Buy up other companies, crush them, <laughs> yeah. Well, that's capitalism yeah. In, yeah. in general. 
right? But like, I mean, like all I'm saying is like to cap off the Telltale thing is like they knew what they were good at and they made those games. Now your mileage may vary on like how much you stuck with them throughout that sure. through, through their formula. But I mean, I would probably be still be okay with playing a Telltale like game and or a formula from them themselves if they were still around. It's just that at some point you have to realize that that's what you're you're, you're pigeonholing yourself, kind of. But like, I mean, you can say that about any company. In order to be successful, you have to be well managed. <laughs> like, you have to yeah. work to tell your employees what's happening and be upfront about them about your financial situation. Yeah. That way, you don't one day oh, come to work and say, "Hey, guess what? You're all fucking fired." <laughs> and actually, I'm fired too because our entire company is lost. Awesome. Until the behemoth comes, buys out your company, yeah. and then it comes into your boardroom saying you're all fired. <laughs> yeah, and uh, you know. I welcome that. Day. So yeah, it was it was a shitty situation and unfortunate, but like there's a lot of nuances to it. But it's just that that was again one of the big things that come out of the industry this year, and yeah. again it was a a negative uh, situation. So I mean, those were the big ones that I wanted to get to that basically happened. If you if you're a hardcore gamer, you probably heard about them anyway. But I figured I'd wrap them up regardless and at least offer some th- of our thoughts upon them. Don't really have anything else like big. Anything? Uh, a couple of things that E mentioned, like next episode of games will be our top games. Mm-hmm. So we might expand upon a couple of things that we touch on, but mostly it'll be us saying what games we thought were the best, etc. So any more thoughts on industry madness from late 18, early-ish 19, my friends? No, I'm mad enough yeah. myself already. <laughs> That's pretty what happened. So and those are our thoughts about it. So yeah, there you go. That's our games and gaming culture industry wrap up again season whatever this is i don't even know anymore i think it's but, five sure. i think this we're starting we'll our fifth five. season we're going five yeah. so i'm I think, impressed yep i think that'll do it we're, we're, we're certainly gonna uh be pumping out the same kind of content <laughs> <laughs> hopefully that will be good for us but uh, i think that'll do it for this one i've been scott thurlow been here with uh jonathan ian manzer i'm going to continue mismanaging this company <laughs> <laughs> yes i hope so and Stephen amosi ready player one uh uh-huh. <laughs> and we shall see you next time good night Thank you for joining the Lost Signals Games and Gaming Culture. Check us out on YouTube and iTunes for the shows and more, and on Facebook and Twitter for updates.